The Stratman has become one of the most popular YouTubers in the car space, and there's no signs of his success slowing down. If you haven't heard about him before, then I'm quite surprised because he's kind of a hard man to miss, especially since he drives a vibrant pink and chrome Bugatti Veyron. Also known as James, he is truly an inspiration. From living out of his Audi TT, homeless on the street, to now owning a Bugatti just a few years later makes quite the story. And he really puts a face to the quote, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. And that's why today I'll be sharing with you the story about James, aka the Stradman, and answering the questions about how he became successful, how he built his empire, and how you can do it too. Not only that, I'll also be highlighting any important traits we see the Stradman possess throughout the breakdown of his story. And trust me, there's a lot, so make sure to watch until the end of the video. With that being said, we have to go back a few years into his past to really see where it all began. In the beginning of his adulthood, freshly out of college, with a degree in finance, he struggled finding a job, which was common because it was right around 2011 after the housing market bubble and people just weren't hiring. Eight and a half percent, Cisco six and a half percent, research in motion 10 percent. It is here working the phone say a lot of their customers are freaked out waiting to see how low the Dow will go. But this allowed the Stradman to immediately pivot his efforts from working a nine to five to finding a way to work for himself. And this is when he started a business by buying and selling cars. So I started this business buying and selling cars, but it just, it just wasn't working out. Notice even from early on in his career, when he was faced with a problem, he immediately tried to overcome it. He didn't let it stop his efforts from what he was trying to achieve. Unfortunately though, his car flipping business just didn't work out. But again, he used this as motivation to find a new way to create a job for himself. One that was also within his interests. What we can see from an early age is that he wanted to be his own boss and rely on himself for job security. And the following day, he packed up all of his things in his Audi TT and just drove off to Utah. He even slept in his car the first night in town. And just like that, the following day, he was able to find an apartment and also find a temporary job to get him on his feet. And it was at this time that he decided to start his YouTube channel. Now, something I've noticed among successful people is they usually hit a breaking point that drives their success. What I mean is if you wanna succeed, you need to hit rock bottom first. And it's at this point when you have nothing or you've lost everything that you're really free to do anything. And it allows you to think differently than when you're complacent and get comfortable with the life you were living. What happens is when you hit rock bottom, it lets you think outside the box. And this is exactly what the Stradman did. When he had nothing to lose, he took his biggest risks. And this is what allowed him to just hop in a car and just leave and drive off. Not many people can do that, especially if you have a career. People become complacent and settle for what they already have instead of taking the risks to better themselves in the future. People tend to get comfortable relying on a paycheck every week, while the self-employed need to constantly improve because they know if they stop, so will their paycheck. Now, if the Stradman had actually gotten a job right out of college, there's a good chance he wouldn't have started his YouTube channel, and there's a good chance we wouldn't be talking about him today. Moving on, he started uploading videos to his YouTube channel on cars he spotted throughout his travels. This was merely just a hobby at first, and that's usually how most successful careers start. Now, as time went on, eventually he found out his coworker was making more money than him, even though he felt he was working harder. Then one day, the guy who worked next to me, I found out that he was making more money than me. I was constantly taking stuff off his workload. And so I went to my boss's office and I put in my two weeks. Hitting rock bottom again for the second time, he decided to pack up his things and drive out to Beverly Hills, California in his Audi TT. Notice how the Stradman learned early on in his career that his hard work would go unnoticed and that when he put in you know, extra effort at his job, he wouldn't get compensated for it. This idea idea resonated with him. And he knew now that if he wanted his efforts at work to go somewhere and to have value, then he would have to rely on himself and become self-employed. This makes the sky the limit when it comes to his salary and how much work he can put in. And this is what inspired him yet again to pack his bag and just move and drive to Beverly Hills, California. With the goal this time to turn his car spotting into a full-time career, every day he would park his car somewhere free and walk to Beverly Hills to film the supercars he saw. And so that would involve me parking the car somewhere where there's free parking, walking maybe you know, a mile to Beverly Hills. Every evening I would go to McDonald's, I would park outside McDonald's, I'd edit my videos, use their free Wi-Fi, post the video. Crazy as it sounds, every night he would find a different residential street to sleep on so he wouldn't get in trouble. And he did this for a consecutive 58 days until his Audi TT broke down.
I kind of wanted to try and summarize for you guys what it's like to be homeless for 58 days um, in Beverly Hills, California. Refusing the help from his parents to fix his fuel pump, it allowed him to stay focused on making his YouTube channel profitable. Notice this time his focus was on building his own success, working for himself. No longer was he blinded by what his coworker was making or if he should get a raise. This time around, he was driven on making this work because he had no other choice. Finally though, YouTube eventually paid him enough to buy a used fuel pump online and he had it shipped to the post office for him since he didn't have a home address and he picked it up and was able to install it the same day. Eventually though, he had this realization that living out of his car full time was just not a smart move and honestly just not sustainable in the long term. And this led to his decision to move back home with his parents for a few months and again get a temporary job that could help keep him on his feet while he continued his YouTube dream. Now a stigma I see time and time again with a lot of up and coming entrepreneurs is their issue with work working a job while also trying to start a business. Now, I want to be the first to say there is nothing wrong with having a career or a part-time job while you start your own business. Working as an employee provides you stability and security of a steady income, but with less risk than owning your own business. You see, having a job to support your basic needs as you create your business can be a smart move because it will greatly reduce your financial strain on your new business while you try to make it, you know, a thing. Not to mention, this will also allow you to reinvest all the profits profits you generate from your business back into it so you can build it stronger for the long-term survival and growth rather than needing to take money out of it to, you know, afford your basic needs. Fortunately for the Strad man, he only had to do this for a few months because he finally got his big break. He took a vacation one weekend to an event in Sun Valley, Idaho called Sun Valley Tour de Force and got the chance to film a few Bugatti Veyrons hitting their top speed on a state closed highway. And as crazy as it sounds, little did he know that one of those Bugatti would eventually be his. But putting that aside, after filming and editing the videos, he would upload one to his channel, and by some stroke of luck, Yahoo.com would actually use one of those videos and put it on their homepage. This single act took his video to a little over 1 million views in 24 hours, which is incredible for a channel that only had 2,500 subscribers at the time. What's even crazier is that video alone paid him over $5,000 from YouTube ad revenue and proved to him that his dream of becoming a YouTuber was possible. With his goal finally, finally proven to work, he just needed to find a better way to fund his life so that he could spend the rest of his time focusing on his channel. Lucky for him, he managed to land another job in Utah as a job cost accountant. I wanted to move back here to Utah, and so I had a job interview for a job cost accountant job up in Park City. So I was entry level accountant, $45,000 a year. He had a hunch though that if he really wanted to blow up his YouTube channel, he would need to be the person driving the supercar instead of the one filming them. And with this new influx of money coming in, he was able to do just that. In about a year and a half after getting his new job, he was able to save up for a Lamborghini Gallardo. Bad man, and today is a very, very, very good day. Incredible. So, there it is. A 2006 Lamborghini Gallardo. And it was at this specific moment when his channel started to immediately take off. He was actually right. Filming himself as a young supercar owner was so unique that it literally broke the YouTube algorithm. This eventually led to him posting a video titled Lamborghini at age 26, what I do for a living to afford a Lamborghini Gallardo. And within just four days from posting it, it had over 4 million views. What's crazier is YouTube paid him over $20,000 for that video. And this video alone really solidified the idea that YouTube was going to be his career and that his dream of filming supercars could really work. He just needed to figure out a way to do that safely, especially since he was financing a Lamborghini Gallardo. The money from YouTube at the time was just too inconsistent. So with that in mind, his plan was to continue working in accounting until the car was paid off. Unfortunately though, a few months later, he found out his company was going under and he was laid off soon after that. This is gonna be a weird video, so I kid you not, I just got laid off. And of course, he filmed a video on his experience and that went viral too. He figured this moment would be his best opportunity to take advantage of his YouTube channel and really double down on doing it full time. And since that moment six years ago, he has spent every day making videos and working on his channel never to look back. Flash forward to today, and I think we would all agree that his hard work has paid off. He's even proven it by saying in 2020 that he was able to make $2 million from his business. This is a very rough number in 2000 and 
2020, I'll make about $2 million on YouTube. Which included YouTube AdSense, merch sales, and even sponsors. Not to mention, I'm sure all of his cars have appreciated in value as well since the pandemic. Reflecting on his story, it's so common that we see a pattern in successful entrepreneurs, and the Stradman is a perfect example. They all are driven to want to be their own bosses, and they realize early on that their efforts will go so much farther if they apply it on themselves and not for someone else. We also see that every time there is an obstacle in their way, they learn how to overcome it instead of letting it defeat them or settling for what they have. Unfortunately though, this is the end of the story for now, but I know there is a lot we'll see from the Stradman. With that being said, make sure to subscribe and like the video if you haven't already. And if you wanna see the story on another successful YouTuber named Matt Armstrong, then make sure to watch the video right over here. Otherwise guys, I'll see you in the next episode. Peace.